Hello, and thanks for stopping by the summit today here on Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams, and it's a privilege to get to visit with the head men's basketball coach at William Penn University, Coach John Henry. Coach, uh, you've been there for you know two decades now. I know that you've seen a lot in your time. In recent years, uh, you've seen a lot of success, and and uh, it's been great for the program. Well, you know what? It reflects now in the preseason poll. Of course, coming off a fantastic year last year, and you have been picked as the preseason favorite in the always tough Heart of America Conference. Talk about the uh, the conference preseason poll and the at least the local bullseye on your back. Very honored to be picked number one. Uh, specifically, uh, every coach in the heart voted for us. Um, and that's a tremendous honor because there are so many good coaches, um, including two Hall of Famers um, and probably two or three more that will be in the Hall of Fame when they re- get further into their careers. Um, so that's a complete honor uh, for our program, uh, our players and our staff and our university, uh, quite honestly. Um, we have a lot coming back. So I don't mean to sound arrogant, but I kind of anticipated being picked number one. I didn't think we'd be unanimous, but uh, with 11 letter winners back off of a team that had a good year last year, I I anticipated some of this preseason stuff. Well, it got some recognition nationally as well. And, and, you know, there's, I mean, you have to call it like it is. And I appreciate your honesty in that 30 and three last season, 12 straight wins to close out the season. And definitely before everything was interrupted, it was just that a season interrupted 17 and one at home, 21 and three in conference play. And that's enough to get you some national recognition in a poll now with divisions combined. The first time that that's happened, you come in at number four in the NAI national preseason poll as well. Yeah, and that's uh, that's something we actually enjoy. Um, you know, a lot of coaches play it off like, oh, rankings don't matter. Um, you know, they actually do in the NAI. You know, rankings matter towards like seeding and national tournament and stuff like that. It matters towards – I mean, I know there's a selection committee now, but the rankings actually matter. Not only that, but, you know, we have a little swagger in our program. Um, and I smile when I say that. Uh, we want to be ranked. We want to be ranked number one. Um, our kids are actually disappointed that they're not number one. Um, <laughs> so how crazy that sounds. Um, but we've been preseason number one a couple of times before. Uh, we've been ranked number one. 2013, we were ranked number one most of the season. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's something that we embrace. We don't run from it. And, uh, you know, we have fun with it, you know. And we know that every night uh, we're somebody's uh, – you know, run onto the floor game. You know, if they beat us, they're going to, you know, they're going to crash the floor. And, uh, you know, it's a big deal to everybody to say they beat the number four team in the country, you know, in their senior season or whatever. So we love it. We love it a lot and uh, looking forward to it. Well, you know, and as you mentioned, though, 11 letter winners coming back, and it's it's one of those things you're more, very likely to get recognition along those lines. Two All-Americans, by the way, coming back as well, and KV on Blaylock and Carmari Newman. Talk about those players and what they mean to the team as, as uh, seniors now. Well, in my 20 years, I've been blessed to have some great, great athletes um, from all over the country and, and, and a few other countries. Um, and KV on Blaylock is far and away the best athlete I've ever had. Um, this guy goes chin high to the rim. Um, he's an amazing story in high school. He was like five foot 10. And then he just went to a junior college to go to school and he grew to six, seven. Um, so he <laughs> junior college team and was first team all region and got a scholarship, um, to a division two where it didn't work out. Just so happens that that division two, um, the assistant coach there that recruited him had played for me. Um, so he he asked me if I would like to have him, and I, I took him. And this guy is outrageous. I mean, he's six seven, handles the ball like a point guard, um, can post up. He plays all five positions for us. Uh, he's really really good, um, and he's an amazing kid. Real soft hearted, real soft spoken. Um, he looks like he's not, um, but uh, yeah, he's he's a tremendous tremendous player. And Kamari Newman originally started at George Mason. And then went to Oakland, um, a school in Michigan, and then ended up with us. Uh, Tremendous shooter, especially from deep, 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 deep. Um, You know, he's hit some shots from 25, 30 feet. Um, Had some big, big games. Um, Working on his defense and rebounding. Goes to the bat. Really, really skilled offensively. Working on other parts of his game to to be an even better player this year. But those are two All-Americans. We also have two other kids who are all-conference 
uh, Eddie Daly, a senior center out of Michigan, and Nate Gehring out of Waukee, Iowa, who's a Pepperdine transfer. Um, Nate was first team, or excuse me, second team All Heart of America, and Eddie was honorable mention. And then Brandon Faison and Q Cager, um, I believe, could have been All Conference players last year too. Um, so we're very, very deep. Ahmad Pinder, Josh Watkins. We've we've got some players. Um, I'm going to leave somebody out, so I'll stop there. That's that, that's one of those things you almost have to have the roster in front of you, especially with players like that and going as deep as what you're talking about. Speaking now with John Henry, who's the head men's basketball coach at William Penn University, the statesman, number four in the country in the preseason poll and at the top of the Heart of America conference poll. Uh, coach, I know you've had an opportunity now, finally, after all this time, to get a chance to to see some action on the court of scrimmage a little earlier this week. Talk about that. We scrimmaged Kirkwood Community College, which is a very dominant um, Division II junior college um, there in the Iowa region. Uh, they won the national championship, I think, two or three years ago, and they've got like five Final Four appearances in the last 10 years. Very well coached, um, very good players. I would say that <clears throat> as far as – Division two junior college goes, they get the pick of the litter in Iowa um, with a lot of really good players. And uh, so it was it was fun. Um, the, the, the amazing part of it was it, it just we were competing against another team live. And, uh, you know, five, six months ago, I, I was concerned that it might not ever happen again. And uh, I about started crying when the ball got tipped up because. It was just amazing that we were actually playing basketball again. And it felt natural. You know, we, we forgot about COVID for about two and a half hours. And our game management staff and my coaching staff did a really nice job of setting the arena up um, to where it was almost like what we were watching in the NBA bubble. Uh, our benches were spread apart. Each, he, each chair had a name tag on it. Um, you had to sit in your chair. And they were spaced out in three rows. And uh, it, 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 the camaraderie for both teams, if, if, you, if you could have felt the energy from both teams cheering for their teammates, it was almost like this huge stress and anxiety came off all of us. Um, and we played really well. We made a lot of shots. We were at home. Um, and at one point, our players and our staff and our red shirts and, and all of our, our program players that were allowed in the gym because no fans were allowed in, yeah. We were cheering so loud for one another that I forgot there were no fans. Um, it was it was really, really a, a, a neat thing to be a part of. I can't tell you how good that sounds. And just from a, a fan's and a broadcaster's perspective and get to and getting to just talk about playing again, seeing this again. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you, Coach. I'm happy for the athletes as well. And well, that's asked, a big deal. You asked me off air about the ending of last year. We were 30 and three. We won the regular season title. And then we won the conference tournament title on a Tuesday night. And we had a selection show uh, for the national tournament on Wednesday. And on Friday, it was canceled. Everything was canceled. Well, it just coincided with our spring break. So we all got together and cried that it was over and we were never going to be together as a whole because uh, every year is different. Every team is different. Yeah. And we thought we were winning the national championship. I mean, we were rolling. And we were getting Brandon Faison back off of injury. I thought we were going down to nationals to just kick some butt and win it all. And uh, so it gets canceled, which is devastating. But when it when spring break started, they weren't allowed to come back. So we never saw any of our players in person from that day until the start of school. Um, the season wasn't just over. The school year was over. And there was no closure at all. And it was it's, it's, it's going to bother me for the rest of my life. Um, but to tip that ball the other night was good medicine. And uh, the Band-Aid has been lifted off. Now it can just become a scar, I guess. <laughs> well, no fans in the building earlier this week. I hope there will be fans uh, at least at some point in time coming in to, to get to watch, depending on how everything works out. And I know that's still a work in progress. But as it is now, we're going to be, I think, at 50% capacity for home regular season home games. But for our scrimmages, we're not going to have anybody. Right. Well, and I understand that, and and justifiably so. And you all need to, to have the opportunity to work it out anyway, Coach. It's just one of those things. Well, when, when the fans do come, it's going to be interesting, I believe, in your house because uh, you have a son playing college ball this season, playing in-state. Uh, not playing for you, though. How does that work out? Well... You talk about fans coming to the game. 
Um, I don't think any of them will be named Henry um, <laughs> because they'll all be in Cedar Falls um, watching my son. You know, my, my I, I talk to people all the time about, you know, I've, I've never cheated. And uh, I, that's a bit of a lie. Um, I once gave a recruit a car, money, a house, and I slept with his mother. Um, and I couldn't get him to come here. Um, it was my, my, my own kid. Um, he went to U University of Northern Iowa. And he told me at an early age, uh, he said, uh, Dad, I'm going to Duke. You know, I'm not coming to William Penn. I'm going to Duke. And I think he was in like first grade or something. I said, all right, son, dream big. Because if the, the dream doesn't get as big as you'd like, wherever you fall is probably going to be a pretty good place. I was thinking it was going to be playing for me. Right. Um, so we met somewhere kind of in the middle, maybe a little higher than the middle. Um, I'm really happy for him, um, you know, that, that he gets to play at that level. You know, I don't know how much he'll play right now. He's got some good players ahead of him. But just the fact that he made his dream come true, that he wanted to be a Division One player, is uh, makes me a very proud father. Um, his mom, um, God bless her. I love her. She's beautiful. And uh, she's obviously a little bit blind since she's been with me so many years. But I don't think she'll see me coach ever, you know, in the next five years. Um, so Thanksgiving might be a little different around here. Um, you know, we usually have a lot of 20, 25 guys in the house. And she does a lot of the cooking and stuff. I might have to cater uh, because there's no way I'm going to go take all those turkeys and hams myself. <laughs> oh, that is uh, – man, that – that, that, that is quite a story, Coach. I don't think – I can tell you that here on the summit, I don't think we've had a fun story like that yet. So I appreciate well, you if, raising if, the bar for us here. Well, if you, if you need to really know, you know, you got little kids. When you raise a son like that and uh, you're a basketball coach, and I've been the coach here 20 years, and he's 19, so he doesn't know any different, you know, than riding a bus or going to the gym or being in the locker room. And he's, he's heard so many things um, that maybe – wasn't great parenting, um, <laughs> but it was coaching parenting, I guess. And then he had a high school teammate named Xavier Foster that people probably know as well. He's a four-star recruit, um, was offered by Kansas and everybody, and ended up going to Iowa State. And his dad was one of my assistants at one point, too. And those two kids ran around our gym as little little kids. And to watch them grow up and then become Division One athletes, um, it's just crazy how – you know, they ran around our gym and didn't come to us. Um, <laughs> you know, good for them. Good for them. It's going to be fun watching them, them continue. It, it definitely will be. And I know that that's something, you know, the folks around the area, they're going to they're gonna know. They're going to know. And they're, they're going to remember those ties. Well, for the ones that are going to be playing in the William Penn uniform this season, uh, this, the schedule uh, gets underway for you. I mean, it's really quickly. November 3rd, you get to take on Waldorf, another in-state opponent, first home game against Terra Stowe. Conference play. Conference play gets underway on November 14th, and that's at Benedictine. So talk about the opening to your schedule. Well, we have a, we used to play Waldorf. They were at our old conference when we were D2 um, six, seven years ago. So I'm excited to get back to, to playing them. Uh, that's a, a longer trip, even though it's in-state, but uh, that'll be that'll be fun. Harris Stowe has possibly the best player in the country. And then, as you said, we get into conference play. We only play we're only allowed to play 24 games this year. Usually we, we play 30 at the NAI level and 19 of our 24 will be in league. Um, so you got to start playing those really early. Plus, you know, you never know with COVID, you know, you might get shut down and have to reschedule. Um, you know, the unexpected is the expected this year. So you, you just never know what's going to happen. You know, they're, they're predicting and anticipating, you know, teams testing positive and having to be shut down for 14 days. And then when they come back, they have to have five days of practice. Well, that's, that's possibly 19 days. Yeah. So you got to prepare your schedule. Of somebody might cancel on you. You might have to cancel or postpone. Uh, so it's going to be crazy to talk about, you know, when we play is uh you know a little odd because i don't know I, it's this is all day to day you know i'm right. just i said it was just so happy to scrimmage the other night we have another scrimmage coming up on the 29th um you know and i'm not going to disclose who that's against just because I, I don't know who's watching but uh um you know it's going to be an, an amazing ride but it's going to be a bumpy one i believe um with the uh, adaptation being probably the most important word and uh, overcoming adversity. 
you know, I, I believe we're loaded with talent. That doesn't mean we're going to win the national championship because we have to take care of our health first to even get on the court. And uh, that's going to be part of the actual game plan for everybody this season. And that's what I hope sports fans understand is like, it's more than just putting the ball in the basket this year. Um, it really is. Um, you know, the, the, the troubles with travel and everything else and all the new things that we have to do, it's, uh, it's remarkable. And it's, uh, it's a little stressful at times, but, uh, you know, you do what you have to do to play the game. I understand. Well, Coach, we will be following you very closely this season. Of course, the potential is there. We'll see how it all works out. And I know that you all are taking care of business as well as you can. And you just hope for the best and, and uh, expect the unexpected. But when the actual expected comes out and the schedule does work out well, uh, I wish you all best. So success to you this season. And Coach John Henry with William Penn, again, his team uh, picked to be number four in the country, number one in the heart uh, as, uh, well, his video has gone away. So I'll say thanks to him for being with me today. Appreciate that a whole lot. And thank you for watching. Please do consider liking and sharing this video and subscribe to the channel to uh, the Midwest Sports Net YouTube channel. God bless you. Have a great day.